Ministry, better known as Cassandra Aaron's Evangelistic Ministry. Been out here doing the street ministry for 25 years. I'm right here joined up and hooked up with the Outreach Crisis Counseling Services. Amen. It's such an awesome ministry. It's, it's awesome to hook up with ministries um, other than yourself. A lot of times people think it's all about them, but it's good when you can find other outreach ministries out here doing something and hook up because it ain't about us. It's about God and getting his purpose. Because they just fed 50 people. Amen. Before I got here. So now we're getting ready to go down to the to the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and feed some more people. It's all about reaching back, going back and getting somebody and touching somebody's heart. Heart. Amen. So lock it in. Don't go nowhere. We're coming right back. We're coming for you. We're going to come back with my introduction. We're going to come back with my testimony. I'm going to tell you about my story. I'm going to tell you what God has done for me. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for you. So lock it in right there. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Cassandra Aarons, a TV and radio personality, will do you right if you advertise with her. We'll boost your business or your ministry. Sponsor a 30-second commercial on the Now Network for a very low price. Let us help you grow your business, your ministry, or your church by calling 614-946-9811. No problem, that number is 614-946-9811. Or just go to the Facebook page, The Cassandra Aaron Show. Thank you. I told you I was coming right back, locking it in, tuning in. I'm glad you didn't go nowhere. Now we're down here on Central and Sullivan, down here feeding um, more people. It's such an awesome time, but I want you to know on today, before moving forward, I just got to pray and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Not that will be done. God, I can't do nothing without you. I can't make it without you. I can't breathe, live, do nothing without you. I'd never do nothing without prayer. You got to always pray. I want to let you know my favorite scriptures on the day is seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Delight yourself in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. I had to dig down to go down into my uh, reservoir because for some reason the enemy just been striking, striking, striking. Have you ever just been striked? The enemy just won't stop. He just keep coming at you like nonstop. And then I had to pull out that scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against me shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know on today. Lord, sometimes you just got to go deep and dig deep and call on the name of Jesus and quote the scriptures because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen and amen. Before switching up, I just want you to know on today that a lot of people always say, Prophetess Cassandra Aarons, why do you do what you do? Um, I always tell people I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. I've been doing this for 25 years. started in New York City. Um, I started it with my aunt. Uh, my Aunt Sarah, powerful, powerful woman of God. And I love that woman of God because what she did was she got some strong, powerful women and my aunt would go down to the Bowery, just like where I'm at right now. She would go down to the Bowery and she would go every third Saturday and feed literally a thousand people. It was the most powerful thing I ever met. And what I loved about my aunt's ministry is she would, when we used to go, I don't know if you ever went into like the shelters um, to feed people, but they would just feed them anything. They would just feed them scrap. They just, you know, the, the mashed potatoes was runny and the, 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 the gravy was runny. And, you know, people didn't really put a lot of love when you went down to these shelters. But I thank God and I praise the Lord that when we did go, my aunt would um, feed the people um, fried chicken, collard greens, stuffing potato salad, um, uh, corn pudding, chitlins, turkey, anything that you, macaroni and cheese, everything that you would eat on a Sunday and how you would eat at home, that's how my aunt fed the people on the streets. It was, it was phenomenal. And she would get down there, real tall, strong, powerful black woman, and she would go down to the barrier and all she had to do was whistle. 
And every time she would whistle, the people would just come from the east, west, south, and north. They would come from all over. And they just loved her and they just honored her. And I said to the Lord one day, I said, I want to do that. I got to do that. And I told my auntie, I said, Auntie, I said, I love what you do. I admire what you do because most shelters I go to, they don't have a lot of love. People who serve in the food, they got attitudes. They ain't giving them anything, just throwing stuff together, get giving them anything they can think of. But they don't put no love in it. And I said to the Lord, I said, I want to do that. And my aunt said, we'll pray about it. Well, I want you to know my aunt prayed about it. That prayer answered so quick. I didn't know what to do. I was like, what launched me up into Columbus, Ohio, ended up here, and it's just been it's just been an awesome, phenomenal trip. Um, I came here and um, nobody was doing nothing. I hate to say it, but you know it is what it is. You know, when I got here, I started my street ministry and uh, the anointing was on me so strong. I used to do tent revivals from the east, west, south, and north. Did all type of outreach. There's not an outreach out here that God didn't use me to do. That's why I tell people all the time, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I've been on the radio. I've been on TV. I've been in news articles. I've been in probably almost all the newspapers here in Columbus. And the most blessed thing is that people watch what I did and they did it. And that's, that's one thing about me. They watch me, they watch what I did, they admire what I did, and they went out there and they did it. And then that's what the blessed, blessed, blessed thing in this whole ministry. That's why I did it, because I can hear the cry of people. I can hear the cry of people. I can hear the, the cry of depression. I can hear the, the cry of loneliness. I can hear the, 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 the cry of, uh, of, of being forsaken. I can hear the cry of the people out here on the streets. That's why I come back. I remember a time when people don't know this story. I, was, I had got evicted back in New York City. And I had to go and stay with this lady. I went, no, I just met this lady at church. I had just got saved. I got a long story, but I'm not going to bore you with it. And um, I went to church and I told this lady my situation. She said, she was so happy. She said, don't worry about it. You can come and stay with me. And so we got in the car. She drew me to our house. And I'm thinking, she had a beautiful house. So when I get into the house, she says to me, um, you could go down in the basement. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go down to the basement. I get down to the basement. It's an unfinished basement. I said, no, this lady did not do me like this. It was an unfinished basement. It was, I mean, anybody would know what an unfinished basement is. It's, everything is concrete. It's, it's cement. So I told the Lord, I went outside. I had like so many clothes. As I went, I had to go in her car, get all my clothes, lay them down in the basement on this floor and slept on my clothes in her basement. And that night, I just began to weep and I began to cry out to the Lord. I said, Father God, I'm your daughter. You did not call me to sleep on nobody's floor. You did not call me to, 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 I said, you didn't call me to this. This is not what you called me to do. This is not what you birthed in me. This is not my purpose. This is not my dream. This is, this is, this Lord, I need you to do. And I just began to cry and cry and cry and cry. And so, I can hear the cry of the people. So that's what keeps drawing me back here to highways and byways. That's what takes me to the streets. That's what takes me to the inner cities. That's what takes me to the hood. That's what takes me to the ghetto. Because I can hear, I can hear, I can hear people crying. I can hear kids crying. Kids should not have to go without. Kids shouldn't have to go without anything. Kids should not have to go hungry. Nobody needs to go hungry. So I can hear the cry of the people, so that's why I'm here today. So I want to just shift it a little bit and just let you know that, listen, whatever God called you to do, people not going to receive you. I've learned in life to just stay in your element. This is my element. The streets are my element. Learn to stay in your element. Too many people are trying to be like somebody else. Be what God called you to be. This is me. This is me, street ministry. I will not, you know, people want me to pull left. What they serving you over there? What you got? Green beans and bacon and chicken and cupcakes. Oh my God, it looks so good. Mike, I love it. What's up, Doc? Bless you. People will try to pull you out of your element. But I know one thing. We will be safe in God's hands. Safe in God's hands. It just put a smile on your face. It just put a smile in my spirit. Because you know why I know God is pleased. 
You're going to be persecuted when you do things for God. I want you to know that you will be persecuted. People will come up against you. People will not like you, but it's okay. Just keep on doing what God called you to do, and you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. Sometime last year, I just knew that I was out of here. I knew that I was going to be destroyed. I knew that I couldn't make it. I thought I was just about to lose it. And I only have a small circle, but I went to my prayer warriors and I began to pray. I mean, ask them to pray for me and I would go to them and I just weep. Every night I just cry, and weep, cry, and weep, cry. And, weep. and one day, my one of my spiritual moms, she said, she said, prophetess, if you do not give this to the Lord, if you do not tap into the Lord, you're not going to make it. Well, she should have never told me I ain't going to make it because that's a trigger. Anytime anybody tell me I'm not going to make it, I'm going to make it. I remember years ago when somebody told me I wasn't going to make it, I said, okay, I'm going to show you something. I went to school, got my associates. Somebody else said I wasn't going to mount out to nothing. I said, okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to go and get my bachelor's. Somebody said, she ain't going to make it. I said, I'm going to make it because I'm not going to be out here screwing Tom, Dick, and Harry. Not this sister. I don't want no man taking care of me. I'm smart enough to take care of myself. So I went out here and then I got my master. But don't ever tell me I'm not going to make it. But I thought it was like a mean thing for my spiritual mom to say that. But now I understand what she meant. Because all this time I have been getting to them to get my prayer through. But they told me, you're going to have to tap in. And if you don't tap into this, you're not going to make it. And I cried out to the Lord. And I cried out to the Lord. And I told God, I said, if you get me through this, I will forever give your name the praise. I said, God, if you get me through this with my mind, peace of mind, in my right mind, God, I will forever give you the praise. And I'm here on this Sullivan and Central forever giving God the praise for blessing my mind, for just keeping my mind because I thought I was not going to make it through this storm, but I'm here to let you know. I don't care what the enemy throw at you. I don't care how he's striking you. I don't care how he hitting you. God is able to bring you through this storm. Sometimes I had to remember how he brought me through a whole bunch of stuff. Brought me through a whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of mess, whole bunch of obstacles. And he did it again for me today. So I want you to know, my people that is listening on today, if he did it for me, he would do it for you. And uh, I, I remember when I got here to Columbus, Ohio, it was just so strange. I never could understand. And I would like for everybody to know to go on my Facebook page, The Cassandra Aaron Show. And just give me your input, give me your feedback. But I will never forget, I could not really comprehend. Here I am, a young black woman, out here doing outreach on the east, west, south, and north. I couldn't understand why so much persecution. And the persecution came from the people of the church. I never could understand that. I can't, I just can't understand why would you want to beat people up, and that's just not me. I'm talking about all the outreach leaders there. I'm talking to all the ministers there. I'm talking to you, elder. I'm talking to you, prophet. I'm talking to you, apostle. I'm talking about when you try to do good by people, the persecution that you have to face in the midst of doing what God will. It's not, it's not easy, but if you trust God, He'll bring you through it with ease. I love that. It ain't easy, but He'll bring you through it with ease. And so when people look at you, they can't even tell you've been through nothing. Why? Because you've been with Him. You've been in His presence, and you've been loving on Him. And so I want you to know on today, I'm still in the land. I'm still giving God praise, and I'm still holding on to His unchanging hand his unchanging favor and it's just a blessing. I want you to know on today that look, greater is he. I thank God that I got three books that's coming out. I'm looking for them to come out for at the, um, come out the end of the month. The one is um, after one trial I've been through. Don't let the whole break you. All right. You said what the, what's that about? Oh you know what it's about. H O E. Don't let the whole break you. Because the hoe is breaking a whole lot of breaking up a whole lot of families in the church. So look out for that. So I'm looking I'm so excited for that book to come out. And then the other one is how how people, the ones who you help turn on you. Oh my god, I know you can relate to that one. The ones you help 
Turn on. Can't you relate to that? I know everybody out there in TV land, you can relate to that. And then the other one is, you might have gave me a breakdown, but God saw fit to break through. Oh, God, God is so awesome. So those are my three books. Look out for that. What are y'all doing out here on the streets today? Tell the camera what y'all doing. Uh, we're feeding the sheep. Oh, you're feeding the sheep. Oh, I love that. Did you? Amen. Do y'all enjoy doing this? Yes! Amen. Why y'all enjoy doing it? Because it like helps them stay from being sick. Like if they don't have nothing to eat, then how are they going to survive? It's the, it's Amen. The if they don't have nothing to eat, how are they going to survive? Amen. Help us. Help us. Take it to the highways. Take it to the highways. And the byways. And the byways. You're welcome. Tell them to come on. Come on. We need your help. We need your help. We need your support. We need your support. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey. The Bible says, delight yourself in him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. You have to learn how to delight yourself in him at all times. I'm going to tell you, when the enemy strikes at me, I'm telling you, I strike back with my praise, with my worship. I strike back with my praise and my worship. Don't allow nobody to take you out your character. There are so many people that will try to take you out your character, try to make you go there. Mm -mm, they're not even worth it. They're not worth nothing. Do not let people take you out your character. And I want to talk to you today. You're going through something, you're going through some hurts, you're going through some disappointments, you've been discouraged, you want to give up, you want to throw in a towel, you want to you, you, you want to walk out your church, your past ain't doing you right, they're not receiving you, you know, when you're sick, they don't call you, you know, when it's your birthday, they don't recognize it, they don't recognize your gift, they don't recognize your anointing, when it's, your, when, when it's, when it's some type of death in your family, you don't get a call, those are some hurtful things because I feel like when you go to church and if it's my birthday, I, sh I feel the sh church should, should recognize that. I do. I believe that when somebody dies in my family and I call you, no, you might not can't be there. At least give me a call. I understand what you're going for. Have you ever just needed prayer? Have you ever just needed prayer and you call the church and you can't get nobody but a voicemail? Good God Almighty, I know what you're talking about. I've been there and I got your t-shirt. It's, it, it's really sad. It's a really sad thing. But I want you to know it ain't nothing sad in Jesus. You have to learn not to put your trust in man, but to put your trust in God. Listen, don't put your trust in man, but put all your trust in Jesus. Amen. Put your trust in God. I remember a time when... Uh, a, a pastor would tell me, why you do, why you come out there, and why you come out here and you feed these people, what they give you, what they give you, let me see, oh my god, that, oh my god, you got sandwiches, cupcakes, string beans, fr fried chicken, oh my, oh, and you got the tracks, whoa, that's what's up, that's what's up, you need it, huh? you need the Lord, amen, amen, 16 month fellowship program. Did you? An inpatient program. And it's called Team Challenge. Team Challenge, okay. Did you do the one in um, New York? Youngstown. Youngstown? Yeah, I heard it was a good one. Okay, good. That's what I heard, but the, all the people was well. Not in the ministry. I know what you're saying. In the community, okay. Okay. I, I have a. I had a great you still have because he know what the Bible said he married to the backslide. You yeah, get that's right, that's all right. And he and you gonna get back. I backslid too. It's your church. No, but that's that's their church. That's their church. That's their church. That's their church. But listen to this. Check it out. Check it out. But listen to this. I backslid. You can't backslip from God. I don't know. Yeah, that's what it's like. He's trying to get back. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just never shut them down. Don't never shut them out your life. You know, I know. I too much of a relationship with them. Because you could have been dead sleeping in your grave. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God bless you, guys. You can encourage. I'll see you Sunday. All right. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the praise. Lord, we give you the honor.
I wake up, I hear that cry. I can hear a cry. I can hear the cry of the backslide. I can hear the, the cry of the heron out of crying out and saying, God, I don't want no more heron. I can hear the cry of the people that are struggling on type of addiction, marijuana, um, alcohol, um, um, popping pills. I can hear the cry of the cutters. I, I can hear the cry. That's what makes me come back. I didn't ask him to come over here. He came. Those are the cries because they're, they're looking for somebody to, to encourage them even when they're low, when they're down in their mess, when they at the gutter, when they at the gutter most, when they, when they hit rock bottom. They just need to hear a voice, a voice, a true voice of God to know that somebody's there, that somebody's cheering them on, that somebody loves them, that somebody want to help them, and that's the voice. Don't never shut your ear to the voice. Don't, don't never shut your ear to the, 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 to, to the homeless. Don't ever shut your ears to those that have been abused and verbally abused and physically abused. Don't never shut your ear to people that are hungry. Don't never shut your ear to those that have been raped and molested. Don't never shut your ear. I could relate to almost anybody. People don't know my story. Now if somebody tell you about Cassandra Aaron's story and it ain't coming from me, Shut your ear to it. There's a lot of other stuff that I want to release, but the Lord saying not yet. One thing about me, I'm not a phony. I'm not a fake. I will tell it all. I will tell it all because if I don't tell it, God gonna tell it. God knows what I'm about, and He knows that I will be honest and I will tell the truth. He knows I'm crazy enough to tell the truth. I said, Lord, I'm ready to get this. I want to get my story out to the fullest. He said, not yet. There's a time and a purpose. Timing is everything. You just can't go out here and tell everybody your story. And you can't go out here and tell everybody your testimony because they're not ready for it. What they'll do is they'll take your information and then they'll use it against you. So timing is everything. Learn how to wait on God. And then when he releases you to tell your story, believe me, it will bless a lot of people. And I'm just knowing that when God released me to tell my story, it's going to bless a whole lot of people. Because people look at my now, but they don't know my past. They don't know my walk. They don't know where I came from. They know nothing. And so I just wanted to let you know that. But I come from a strong, strong foundation of women. My mother had uh, 14 siblings. My mother had had uh, nine, nine girls and there was five boys and that all the girls were strong, all the men were strong. My family come from south and my mom was very strict on me. Um, I was the one that was very rebellious. Um, they tell me that I was spoiled. I'm 52 years old. I sure would like to be spoiled again because I don't know what that looks like, what that seemed like, nothing. I'm the oldest girl. I got one brother, one sister, and my brother and sister are doing wonderful. To God be all the glory. I'm the oldest, and they, I was their role model. And they, they, everything I did, I went to school. My brother and sister did. I worked. They worked. It. It's just my, my sis, my, my siblings are really, really blessed. And we got that from my mom. We got that from strong genes. And I'll never, I'll never forget. Um, Cause I give the shirt off my back. I'm a giver. Anybody tell you in my church? I used to have a church, and I just give. It was not a Sunday. You was not gonna work in my church, and you weren't gonna give them. I am a giver. I was born to give. I live to give, and that blesses me. But anyway, to make a long story short, I'll never forget my aunt. And my aunt, she had a house and um, very wealthy, you know, well, you know, middle class. But my aunt would always feed everybody on the block. It was crazy. She'd let you go on her refrigerator. She'd let you drink all her juice. She'd let you go in her cabinet. She'd let you go. I mean, it was just crazy. And she would never say nothing. And if anybody know from New York who watching this, I want you to hit me up. My aunt never said no to nobody. And I always wanted to ask her, like, like why? And so I, out of 14 kids, I believe my aunt had to know about lack. I had, I, I don't know, because she always had. But I'm just saying, she had to know something about lack or people being, or she must have been hungry. I don't get it. She would just let us eat, and man, I mean that was that. I mean I will never forget her, forget that. And there was many times, you know, I was hungry and thirsty, and she would just let me just go on the refrigerator. Never said no, never. And, uh, and so I wanted to tell you that this is just a little bit, a little bit of background on me. 
Learn how to live. Learn how to be true to yourself. Learn how to be real. But it ain't about me. It's about you working your ministry. Yeah, what's this? Some chicken. Oh my God. Some chicken. Oh my God. Man, that's. And that's home cooked. Home cooked. Oh, that's home cooked. That ain't put together. This is a. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. put their heart in that. Yeah, they put their heart in that. Why won't you take some string beans? <laughs> take some string beans. You know, people don't want to do this because there's no offering. So you can't get an offering out here. So you can't scheme people out here. You can't run game out here. You can't do that. When you come out here, you better be real because if you ain't real, they're going to tell you ain't real. When you come out here in the streets, we down here at the bottoms. Either you got it or you don't. And if you got it, they're going to tell you got it. And if you don't got it, they're going to tell you they got it. And so I want you to know there's no offering here. We ain't raising no offering. But I love to do what I do because you can hear that cry. Do you hear that cry today? Do you hear a cry? Or are you too busy wrestling and fighting with each other? Can we all just get along? Can we stop hating on each other? Can we stop being jealous of each other? Can we stop dogging each other from the pulpit? I mean, I don't like that. I went to a church one time and a man was dogging somebody on a pulpit by name. That's hard. You shouldn't do that. That's, that's, that's just not nice. I literally, and it's not, it just not happened once. It happened a lot of times when people get up there and dog pastors and bishops and mega churches. You know, I, I, and I hate it. They come to, they don't come to me with that mess. When they start talking about a pastor or leadership, I say pray for them. Pray. Don't talk. You ain't walking in their shoes. You ain't doing what they have done. You don't know the price that they pay. You have no right to talk because I'm looking at your life right now and you ain't doing nothing with yours. So since you ain't doing nothing with yours, you need to shut yours, get busy, get busy for the Lord, and get your mouth off these women of God and these men of God. That's what you're going to do. Right? Ain't that what we're going to do? We're going to get our mouths off these people. Oh, y'all getting tired now. Y'all getting tired? Yeah. Right. Oh, we love you. We love you. This is me. This is my element. This is what I do. God has blessed me. But um, if you want to help me to be more of a blessing and be more of a people and have a more variety of food, all I got to do is put my phone number in and the amount and PayPal and just send it to me. Amen. 501C nonprofit organization and trust and believe your money will not return gifts. We will go right back into the streets. God bless you. Thank you for locking it in, tuning in, and I'll see you all next week.